Hello everyone! Welcome to this Sims 3 house design video. So this is part one of a two-part house build. So if you're watching this the day that it came out, part two will be out soon in like a couple days. Um, and if you're watching this anytime in the future, you can check out a link in the description below to see part two and also there'll be a, a card at the end as well. Uh, but yeah, so this house is in Plymouth Isle, so I'm back in the same world that I've been working on for a very long time. It's a world that I've created completely from scratch, so if you haven't seen that series on my channel, I recommend checking that out. There's also a link in the description below to download the world if you don't have it yet. So this house was built on a lot number 37, so if you have the world, you can download the house and place it on that lot. Um, there's a link in the description below to download the house, and then also a link to a lot map so you can see which lot uh, 37 is. But yeah, this house is right here next to Green Georgian, which is the previous house that I did, and kind of across the street from the art gallery in the world, so it's right here kind of in the town center on this corner lot. So just like the lot uh, next to it, and kind of all of the ones on this side of the street, it um, is kind of on a sloped lot, kind of as a hillside here. This lot is not as long as the other ones. It doesn't go as far down the hill as the other ones on the street because there is another one like right behind it. So it's there's not really a backyard or anything to this house, but it does have a garage here that's kind of underneath. I'm going to work on getting a basement in and everything. This house ends up having four bedrooms and three and a half bathrooms. So it's a decent size, it's a little bit bigger than the house uh, I just did last time, which is right next door. And it costs uh, about 208,000 simoleons. So kind of around, I guess, you know, the same ballpark as the other houses kind of on this street. So this house I've, I called Vermilion Verandas because it kind of went for more of like a reddish color on the outside. Of course, like actual vermilion is a much like more vibrant color than what I did here, but I went with like a more desaturated color because I thought it looked better on the house. And then I called it verandas because it's, you know, an alliteration. Vermilion verandas got the two V's there. And, you know, you have uh, kind of one veranda on the house. So not really a plural, but it sounded better that way. Anyway. Right now, I'm kind of working out the floor plan. I have this kind of funky room in the back where that bay window is, and I, I wanted to fit two bedrooms in that area, and I ended up making one a bedroom and one a study. So, I mean, like I mentioned, this house is four bedrooms, but you could convert the study into a fifth bedroom, and there's like a little library kind of area that could be a sixth bedroom, and there's a whole basement uh, that I didn't really use too much. So, you know, there's lots of extra space in this house as well. But yeah, it is four bedrooms. That's the way I furnished it. And yeah, three and a half bathrooms. But anyway, right now I'm working with the basement, just getting that uh, carved out. You can see it's quite a large basement. This is a bigger house than I intended it to be. It, you know, ended up just, I don't know, just being a lot bigger in kind of every way. So, you know, I was, I was hoping for maybe, I mean, I was hoping, I guess, for it to be a four bedroom or three bedroom house, but it just ended up being a larger house than I anticipated, a lot more extra rooms like the study and the library and this, you know, larger rooms than I thought so, but it's fine. I just kind of went with it with this house and it just turned out as it did. But anyway, the veranda kind of goes over the garage, which was a problem because to put a column for it would mean like the column would have to go right in the middle of the driveway. So I think probably in part two is when I rem or uh, modify that area. So, you know, it's it it's fine. I, I change it up and it looks good in the end. But right now it does look a little questionable, especially once I start putting the columns in. But no matter. Anyway, right now I'm working on the roofing. So I'm just kind of getting in some porch roofs and or the veranda roofs as, as I'm calling them in this house. And yeah, the main roof I'm going to make it a little bit taller. But you can also see there's kind of like a turret going on here. So that's kind of in the center there, which is very nice. Very distinctive feature for this house. I had a little bit of difficulty with this roof here, but got it figured out in the end. And here I'm just raising the roof heights as well. So just kind of getting that to look nice and uh, getting in the chimneys here. So putting in a couple of those, a couple of fireplaces in the house, one in the living room and one in the dining room. So I put this fence around 
this um, veranda, which is kind of more of a porch, really. But, you know, but I didn't put any fencing in the front because it, you know, I feel like, I, I don't know for sure, but I looked up the definition of veranda and I believe that it's, they generally don't have uh, a railing, but I could be wrong on that. I, but, you know, I kind of had to have a railing in the areas where there's a massive drop off. So I just didn't put a railing in the very front because it doesn't need it there. Anyway, going to the second floor here, I'm kind of, uh, you know, getting the floor plan worked out. We have the master bedroom there in the front and the master bathroom behind it. And getting in another bedroom here where the kind of turret is. And then there's going to be one more bedroom in the back. Originally, I had it as two separate bedrooms that were both really small, but I decided to remove the wall down the middle and make it one larger bedroom. I thought that worked a little bit better. And there's going to be one hallway bathroom upstairs, and then one of the bedrooms has an ensuite, and the master, of course, has an ensuite. So that kind of works out like that. But anyway, here I'm just getting in some beds just to see how they all look and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, and the first floor here, I end up removing this kind of strange room and end up with the office being the kind of skinnier room there and then the bedroom being the other room. And then I move the basement stairs to be in that hallway. So instead of being underneath the uh, main stairs, I put them there. So this house actually ends up having two laundry rooms, which is a little different. I don't think I've done that ever really. So yeah, there's gonna be one downstairs here by the kitchen then another one upstairs. So I guess that's fun. You know, it's a very fancy feature there. But I think I think some houses do have that. You know, larger houses might may have uh, two laundry rooms, like an upstairs one or a downstairs one. So I put that in this house. Anyway, here you can see getting in some archways and stuff in the house. Uh, just getting some doors in as well, just across the first floor here. And I get in some doors upstairs as well, of course. The upstairs floor plan looks very messy right now, as you can kind of tell, but it doesn't really change too much from this, but I will, of course, separate or unseparate that uh, those two bedrooms and make one. Anyway, the basement, though, is pretty simple. Down in the basement, we have a garage, um, a workroom, uh, not workroom, a workshop, and just a big empty room. So yeah, that's basically the basement in a nutshell. Anyway, here I'm getting in some windows. Of course, I'm using my favorite windows, which are from the Now and Then Century Manor set from The Sims 3 store. I use these windows in a lot of my houses. I, I try not to use too, many, too much store content, but I do use these windows a lot just because I really like them. So here they are again, making another appearance. So right here, it's getting a nice arched window there for the master bathroom and some more windows here around the house, and then some more over there, and some more across the front. It's a lot of windows, basically. And then I got some smaller windows here for the second floor, of course, so just getting all of that in. And yeah, so I mean, I think that's primarily all of the windows for the house here. So, you know, looking good. I do get like a little back uh, balcony here for this bedroom that will be one bedroom. So yeah, it just ends up having this nice little balcony in the back. So you can, you know, go and view the ocean kind of. It's kind of an ocean view for this house. I don't know how much that'll be affected by building a house behind it that may kind of block the view to an extent, although this house is higher up on the hill than the one that will be below it, so maybe not too bad. It won't block it too much, but yeah, the back of the house does face the ocean, and since it is pretty high up, you can kind of see over the other buildings uh, that are kind of down lower, so it's nice. Anyways, a little back door there off of the um, basement garage. So, you know, kind of gives access to the outdoors there, even though there isn't really a backyard of any kind with this house because it's a smaller lot. But, you know, anyway, here is getting a small, like, extra uh, balcony here. So basically by doing this, I got this nice little extra detail on this side of the house, but also a balcony for the master bedroom, which I thought was kind of nice. Although, doesn't really have much of a view, but you know, it's there. Anyway, here just doing some adjustments. I got some tr some plants and stuff outside, uh, you know, some trees and things. I, I don't know how much of that I do right now. I know I do a little bit near the beginning, so I guess we'll see how much. But yeah, and right now we're gonna begin on the colors. Uh, this is the same thing that happens with every single house I make, pretty much. I choose a color, paint the whole house that color, and then change my mind later. Although in this house, most of the time that I spent changing the color of it, I do off camera, so that doesn't affect the um, time of the video, though it still ended up being a two-part video anyway, so, you know, I'm still not that speedy at building these houses. But anyway, here you can see 
Uh, going for this red color, which I do tone down a little bit. I kind of make it a little bit more purplish, though not too much. It's very subtle and a little bit more desaturated in the end, just because, I don't know, I, I didn't really like the red too much as it was, but I do make a very subtle change. Anyway, here, just getting that everywhere. So yeah, basically the whole house is siding apart from the foundation and the chimneys, which I make stone. And then I have a few areas that I have as an accent with like some stucco, which you'll see. But anyway, just getting that siding on, just kind of getting that everywhere and recoloring these columns here to white, which is very nice. And that railing, also these columns as well. So yeah, these are the columns I was talking about where they can't go at the very end here because the garage door or the, the driveway right there. So you can see it kind of overhangs there a little bit weird. So I decided to get rid of that part, which I think that's in part two. Anyway, for stone, I don't know. I had trouble picking a stone that I liked. I ended up going with the stone from the base game here, but recoloring it. I was considering the stone that I used in the house next door and the house next door to that, but just because it felt like a little monotonous, I decided to go with something a little different here but yeah just going through recoloring basically and adding that to the house I think I actually recolor it again a little bit more so than what I just did there because that looks a little brown I went with more of a gray uh, stone for this house so you can see just doing that here and there we go so now recoloring the chimneys and stuff and oh actually adjusting it yet again and recoloring everything yet again but yeah so that's the stone on the house um, so yeah, anyway, now I'm going to get the stucco material out here. So just going for this kind of uh, wood trim that I like quite a bit. And I'm just going to get the wood on there and then just go for like this off white kind of creamy colored stucco. That's really paint, but I, I'll call it stucco. So I use that there on that bay window and then again on the front bay window and then on the turret I believe so that kind of just adds a little bit of an accent to the house so it's not all the same but yeah anyway that's the outside colors for now uh, just recoloring the tops of those chimneys there so they look a little bit nicer I also had to cover up all the windows in the turret with curtains unfortunately because when you use those turret roofs uh, it, it doesn't cut out the roof beneath so if you see those windows you can just see the roof like right there on the inside that drives me nuts so I do block off those windows with curtains and blinds so from the outside you can't see the roof that clips through which is it's always annoys me always annoyed me but you know it's fine I just did that little little cover up there anyway getting in some flooring here on the inside obviously not going with these colors that I have right now but I will you know change them a little bit but yeah, getting in the fireplaces as well and adding some stone on the inside of the chimneys there. And yeah, so on the inside here, I'm going to recolor all the doors and archways and stuff to match the windows, which I just hadn't done yet. So just kind of going through doing that. So a lot of doors to recolor though, as you can see. So going through and making sure that they all match and also getting some more windows there for that room, which is nice. Here I was looking at different roof colors, but I did not end up changing it. So now I'm going to go through and change the floor colors on the inside here. So I ended up going with somewhat of a contrasting lighter wood and a darker wood. And you can see I also used a different wood material or different wood pattern on the inside here, which kind of has these squares. It's like a checkerboard kind of thing, although they're all the same color. And then it has like these square borders. And I use that. So it is kind of a busy flooring as you can see because of that like pattern but I don't know I thought it looked kind of cool so I decided to go with that and it just looks kind of fancier I suppose but yeah so those are those rooms and now I'm going to kind of get in just uh, some furniture I'm not sure uh, how much furnishing I do now and this I know I jump back and forth with a bunch of th different things but I think in this part I do finish the living room the dining room the kitchen I think the little uh, library and the first floor bathroom. So those are the things that I finish. And then I move on to the um, other rooms and stuff and, and most of the landscaping in the second part. So again, the second part's coming soon after this one. So if you're watching this video like any time in the future, pretty much any time after like the first day or two of it being out, there'll be a link in the description so you can check that out and go on to part two and, you know, about... 10 minutes or so when this part is over uh, and yeah there'll also be there'll also be an end card at the end of the video so you can check out part two but anyway here just doing some adjustments to the colors here in the living room so uh, just going with kind of I think 
I end up going with kind of like a purplish color, though I think I make it a little bit less so uh, in the end. But also getting the kitchen flooring in here. The kitchen's kind of got a green color scheme, so I have this very dark green floor. And I went with like these gray kind of tiles on the counters and on the walls. And then I also go with like the uh, matching green color for the other parts of the walls using that floor kind of as a jumping off point. But yeah, here we're just kind of getting in those walls, uh, that wall material. So getting in the tile and then also the green color on there. So those are the walls for the kitchen and getting in some lighting here is also the laundry room that's kind of attached to it right here. So it's basically the same room, but it's kind of a little bit separated with that archway. And there's a washer dryer in there and a secondary sink in that room. But here I'm just going to recolor some of the uh, appliances here in the kitchen. So just doing that right now. Also the dishwasher there as well, getting that in and doing a little bit of recoloring. And yeah, I think that's mostly it for the kitchen for now. I think I'll come back a little bit later though to do a few more things to it, a few more details. But uh, what's happening now? Oh, I guess I'm going to do a little bit more landscaping. So just getting in some trees and stuff. I don't know. I, like I said before, I do jump around to quite a bit with this house. I don't really uh, settle on one thing and just like finish it. I kind of like start stuff and then move on and then come back. So yeah. But anyway, I got a wall here that kind of matches the house next door. Just I thought kind of, you know, uh, brought some continuity with this house. So they ha kind of have those matching walls. And yeah, it's getting in some more plants and stuff here at this point. I really wish I could have that wall be like one continuous wall and not having that like break in it between the two lots. But unfortunately, there's really nothing I can do about that. So there is this kind of strange like end of the wall and then it kind of starts again but that's fine. I got these kind of uh, purplish trees here to go on either side of the entranceway, which is kind of cool. I don't use those trees all too often, so it was nice to get those in. And then here's I'm recoloring the outside of the house. So I, yeah, I go through a few different options here, but I think what I have now is what I settle on. So I do end up doing most of that off camera because I didn't want to sit here and spend a bunch of time recoloring the house all over again. So yeah, but anyway, um, that's basically the new color there, but yeah, so at this point now, all the house is recolored, even though you didn't see me do it, because, uh, I just kind of cut there to do that. Anyway, we're back in the inside here, so I'm kind of recoloring some lights and stuff. Uh, the dining room here, I'm going to get in some sort of chandelier over the dining table, which is very nice, so there it is. And I get one in the living room as well, I believe, so there you go. And here I'm going to recolor the fireplaces. I actually went with some stone uh, texture on those, which I thought was kind of cool. So that's what I ended up using. And here I'm going to recolor the furniture in the living room. So I went with somewhat of a more um, off-white kind of beige color, not the blue. So yeah, there we go. And oh, we're back outside again. And we're back inside. So yeah, those are the couches there. And then the uh, little chair over here, I probably will put the same color on as well. And yeah. And here I'm going to get in a slightly different wall color. I just did a slight tweak there to it. And I'm also going to recolor the stairs and the railing and all that kind of stuff. So just doing that right now. So I'm just kind of going through different options here with the stairs and the railings and stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm also going to get in the curtains as well in the living room. I think I matched them to the other furnishings. So just kind of getting that match. And I use those curtains basically throughout the house. But yeah, so, or throughout the main rooms of the house, but anyway, that's the living room. This is going to be a bedroom here. It's getting in some basic furnishings, though, and, well, yeah, I don't know if I do the deck right now. I think maybe, maybe not. I think I just uh, placed a wood there, but I didn't actually, like, go in and do all the corners and stuff. Anyway, coming in here now to do some of the living room plants and kind of do the finishing details of the living room. I got in a couple bookshelves here on either side of the fireplace, like a little plant there, a little flower there as well, and some stuff on the coffee table. Got a little side table in this long hallway. Uh, this house does have quite a long hallway here that kind of goes around the corner as well, so definitely quite a hallway right there, but, you know, uh, it makes it more unique, I suppose. And getting in a rug here, so just a simple rug that you know, kind of matches the colors for the room. But yeah, just going through uh, different options there. But I think that's what I settle on right there. And I think that's pretty much it for the living room. I don't think I really do too much more there. I got a little runner in this hallway here and recolor that to match. 
And then I'm also gonna get in like a mirror here over this side table. And then probably just a few simple things, a little flower, and I think a phone as well. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the living room area. Uh, I think next I might handle the dining room. So yeah, the dining room is right here. And I went with a different kind of paneling for the walls here. Again, this is supposed to be a kind of a fancier house. It's 200,000 simoleons, a little bit more than that. So yeah, getting into the fancy paneling. And then also these chairs here, just recoloring that for the dining table. Uh, going around going around the table there, new chair colors. Uh, this is definitely a very spacious dining room. I think it's probably a bit larger than the living room. It has plenty of room though, so I think all the dining chairs are usable, perhaps except for the last one by that archway to the kitchen because that may be blocked by the archway. I don't know. Anyway, I made a little combination uh, furniture piece here by combining a bookshelf with a dresser, so I thought that looked kind of fun. So you know, we kind of have that multi-function piece, although I'm sure the dresser is probably the only usable item there. Um, I doubt the bookshelf is functional, but yeah, looks kind of interesting. I also got a little sitting area over here um, in the bay window. So there's like a little love seat there, and then also a couple of side tables, which I think I put lamps on them. I did, so there you go. And that looks kind of, uh, you know, interesting. Anyway, just getting in a rug in this room as well. So just recoloring that. And I think I got a nice bit of artwork over the fireplace. So just putting that in. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the dining room. Here I'm just going to uh, come back to the kitchen a little bit just to do a few more touches here. So I'm just kind of adding some details to the laundry room area on this little shelf here. And also just, uh, you know, adding a few decorative items as well. I'm still getting in another shelf too. So, you know, why not? And yeah, I think I'm gonna get a few details in this kitchen area though. So it's gonna recolor the little dining set that's in here. Uh, you know, it's a nice little Eden kitchen, which is, which is you know, convenient, I suppose. Your Sims can eat here if they don't want to, you know, have to use the formal dining room for every meal. But yeah, just recoloring these seats here and getting a little bit of flowers, uh, flower action there on the table and a little rug there underneath as well. And I'm also gonna add in, you know, some mats in the kitchen as well. So like one here, on, you know, in front of the sink, and I think uh, maybe I'll get some plants in, and maybe a bit of art as well, so yeah, I think that's mostly it though for the kitchen area, also got a little rug there in the laundry room area, but anyway, now I'm going to move on to this little room here, which was originally going to be the study, but I decided to make it a, like, kind of small library reading area, it is kind of a very useless room, but it's there, so, you know, kind of just makes the house a little fancier, because you have this extra fancy reading room, I guess. So, you know, all it has is four bookshelves, a couple armchairs, a little side table, and, you know, some plants there in the corner, and also a lamp there, and a rug, but that's pretty much it. So, yeah. And then the last room that we're going to do before the end of part one here is this little bathroom right here. So this is the only bathroom on the first floor. It's a half bathroom. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this uh, video. If you did, I'd greatly appreciate it if you consider subscribing. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like, and I'd also love to hear your feedback in the comments below. And like I've said plenty of times, uh, part two will be coming out shortly after this one, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, you know, subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss that. But yeah, uh, just getting in some details here in this bathroom, uh, kind of getting it uh, looking nice. But of course, you can download the house. There's a link in the description below, so you can add this to Plymouth Isle for yourself. And there's also a link to download Plymouth Isle as well down in the description. But anyway, this... Um, yeah, anyway, I was going to say the screenshots are coming up, but they're not because this is part one. So, you know, you can see those in part two. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. I hope you all have a great day.